Reddit ask me anything. We're experts working with NASA to deflect asteroids from impacting Earth. Ask us anything. NASA's double asteroid redirection test, known as DART for short. This is the first mission to demonstrate the kinetic impactor technique, which involves slamming a spacecraft into the moon of an asteroid at high speed to change its orbit. In October 2022, DART is planned to intercept the secondary member of the Didymus system, a binary near-Earth asteroid system with characteristics of great interest to NASA's overall planetary defense efforts. At the time of the impact, Didymus will be 11 million kilometers away from Earth. Ask us anything about the DART mission, what we hope to achieve and how. At this point, what would you say is the largest asteroid you could deflect, and what would be the consequences if it wasn't deflected? The DART spacecraft will change the speed of Didymus B by a bit less than a millimeter per second. So, my question in return is how much warning time we have. If we had decades to a century of warning time, and could build as big an impactor as we want, we could move something a kilometer or two in diameter. If one of those made it through, we think it would cause civilizational collapse. With less warning time, we might need to use a nuclear device to deflect large asteroids. This is part of the impetus to find potential impactors early. Andy. Andy, is there not a treaty forbidding that? Or does this exclude it? Well, funny thing. International law does forbid doing nuclear tests in space. And a lot of us are working on doubt-like mission to provide non-nuclear options. Having said that, I think we all assume that if the future of humanity were at stake that the UN Security Council would support using nukes as a deflection method since it's not a test and not being used as a weapon. But formally the jury is out. No pun intended. Andy. Hi team. Thanks for doing this ask me anything. To your knowledge, what is the closest to major catastrophe have large populations been and not really known? And, what is the most boring or mundane part of your job? To my knowledge, that'd be the Tunguska impact in 1908, if its incoming path was only slightly different. It would have hit St. Petersburg, the Russian capital, because it hit in Siberia just before a period of European unrest. It took a while to figure out what happened. As for number 2, that'd be the telecons and nearly endless parade of spreadsheets that come from making sure a project will be done correctly. Andy. I feel like the space race would have been much different if a major empire's capital was literally annihilated by a huge rock from the sky. If an asteroid is approaching Earth. Can NASA directly use its defense technique and destroy it or does it have to wait for a US government order? Or wait for the whole world to take a decision with agencies like the UN? Part of NASA's job is to research and develop techniques for asteroid deflection, but not to go and do it without direction. If we discover an asteroid with a significant chance of impacting Earth, NASA's responsibility is to inform US government leaders, who would then inform the international community if needed, Tom. If needed, duck me ee. Where's the space rock going to hit? Somewhere in Mexico. Great, then I won't need to build my wall. We're going to destroy the asteroid, but Mexico is going to pay for it. Hey team, my question is are we looking at a big possibility in the near future, say 1000 years to face a problem of this kind and are we ready to prevent it? Other than that thanks for your work towards saving this blue dot. We are pretty sure we have found 90% to 95% of the neos of dinosaur killing scale, and none of them is a danger in the next century. Beyond that, we have to make statistical predictions. Statistically, over 1000 years, we'd expect a handful or two of impacts of a scale that could be locally or regionally very serious, unless we find the objects and prevent the impacts, of course, Tom. Is it a matter of time until you reach 100% or will there just be some asteroids that are impossible to detect? Everything is a matter of time. Given the technology that will exist in a thousand years, we'll certainly be able to detect and deflect any asteroid. As long as civilization lasts long enough, we're in a very fragile time right now since there are lots of things that could wipe us out but once we colonize other planets we'll be pretty much safe from civilization ending threats. Is there a specific type of asteroids you are really afraid of? One whose orbit intersects Earth. Colon. Lena. One whose orbit intersects Earth and we haven't discovered yet. But really, being afraid isn't the right response to this natural hazard. Being aware and smart is. 
Tom. Where was this spacecraft built and designed? It's being built and designed at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, Lena. We read stories about huge asteroids that we don't even see until they are already super close or have already passed us. Is there really any way to combat these? Part of the reason we don't see these asteroids is that we've had limited ability to look in some directions using our ground-based telescopes. One of the ways to combat that is to put search telescopes in space. For instance a successor to the Nearwise Orbiting Telescope, Andy. Yes. Basically you'd want to build the right kind of telescopes that can find them. Remember that the asteroids are orbiting around the sun, like the Earth is. So the fact that we find them as they go by, no matter how close is a good thing, because they are going to come around again, and we want to make sure that none of those future close passes are too close. Tom. What would you do for incredibly large meat it was the size of a small country? Small country like Monaco, or small country like Ecuador, colon, Andy. I guess Monaco. Okay, for a Monaco sized impactor, maybe a mile or so across, we can handle it given enough warning time by ramming it with spacecraft like DART or perhaps using nuclear devices to vaporize and propel the asteroid. Not necessarily a situation we want to be in, but I think it is doable given current technology. Andy. Alright. But what about an Ecuador sized one? Luckily, there is only one asteroid that big, and it's not going anywhere, colon, otherwise, I suppose I might point you toward the movie Melancholia, which I understand might be relevant, Andy. Do you guys have a team of highly trained oil drillers lying in wait in case of a real emergency? Hi, my dad is letting me use his account to submit this question. My name is Sol and I'm 13. Thank you for doing this and I have two questions. Would this project help with asteroid mining? And with current technology, could we change the course of an asteroid the size that killed the dinosaurs? Hi Sol, I certainly think that some of the things we learn about Didymus can help with asteroid mining. Particularly the nature of asteroid surfaces and how to guide ourselves to them. As far as the KT impactor, if we had enough warning time we could probably deflect something that size. Happily, we are very confident we already know that nothing that size is on a collision course. Andy. Are other countries that have a strong foundation in space tech, such as China, Russia, ETC, preparing as well to deflect asteroids from demolishing our lovely Earth to smithereens? The US works with other countries on the problem, both through the UN and otherwise. The DART team has members from around the world and a European spacecraft called Hera may be selected we hope so, to visit Didymus a few years after the DART impact to do a thorough assessment of what DART did, Andy. Hey NASA and the Duo Op team, I'd like to thank you for hosting this Reddit Ask Me Anything discussion. My questions are, how often do you suspect these planetary defense missions to be used once they're rolled out in the future? How is the reduced budget of NASA going to play into the development of the planetary defense missions? Once finished, will this be part of NASA or the recently created Space Force? What is your favorite planet? Semicolon. Thanks again for hosting this Ask Me Anything and looking forward to hearing back from you. Question 2. Planetary defense is now explicitly a part of the NASA budget where not very many years ago it wasn't. So that's an improvement. The Planetary Defense Coordination Office will carry out its mission with the resources that Congress appropriates. Question 3. Planetary Defense is definitely in the purview of NASA. Tom. My favorite planet hasn't been discovered yet. Tom. Alright Tom. Stop being cheeky. And tell us which of the currently discovered planets you consider your favorite. Okay, okay, I never ever get tired of giving somebody their first ever view of Saturn through a telescope. It's a life changing experience for so many people that I have to say Saturn is my favorite. That's not a scientific answer but it's mine. So there, Tom. I still remember the first time I saw Saturn. I prefer the view of Uranus. In regards to movies, which was more realistic about a possible asteroid strike, impact or Armageddon? In regards to real life, what is the realism of dealing with an asteroid that is of the kind mentioned in aforementioned movies? Would they really destroy the planet? Could we actually do something about it? What are the chances of a DART test impact actually redirecting the course of an asteroid into an Earth impact scenario instead of preventing it? Impact. 
Hands down. Of course. I cannot remember the sizes of those asteroids. So hard to say. Just as an example. The dinosaur killer was 10 kilometers. And we found is greater than 99% of the near earth asteroids of that size. The chances are pretty much none. The DART mission will target a binary asteroid system called Didymus. Which is comprised of a football stadium sized object orbiting around an object about a half mile wide. The DART spacecraft, which is the kinetic impactor, will impact the smaller moon so we can see how the moon's orbit changes around the larger body. This will not change the path of the Didymus system with respect to Earth but rather just change the path of the smaller asteroid about the larger asteroid in the Didymus binary asteroid system. Lena. Should we be more worried about a decent sized asteroid hitting Earth or a small asteroid hitting a satellite? It would probably depend on the exact sizes and the warning time. Actually, we would try to move an asteroid threatening Earth. But we would try to move a satellite if we thought an asteroid might hit it. All in all, assuming you choose to worry about either, it would be the asteroid hitting the Earth. For your day to day purposes, though, worry more about other things than either one. Colon. Andy. Can we assume that you are successful? Since there haven't been any big asteroids striking Earth lately, I assume the whole dinosaur extinction event was before you got involved. Nah, we let that happen. Just kidding. We have been very lucky so far in that the asteroids that have hit Earth that have been large enough to do extensive damage have either hit in remote areas or not when humans were around. However, we take this threat very seriously, Lena. I have a few questions. Does the target asteroid actually present any risk to the Earth? Is the target asteroid representative in size speed material of what we would expect in a real scenario? Is there a significant risk of asteroid impacts on Earth? How likely are they? Thanks in advance. No it does not. Yes. That's one of the reasons that we chose Didymus. No known asteroid poses a significant risk of impact with Earth over the next 100 years. The highest risk of impact for a known asteroid is a 1 in 714 chance of impact by an asteroid designated 2009 FD in 2185. Meaning that the possibility that it could impact then is less than 0.2%. The Century Impact Risk Table, which is maintained by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's Center for Neo Studies is updated continuously as new asteroids are discovered and known asteroids are further observed. To see it, go here. Kneas JPL NASA Gov link. Lena. When do you expect to deflect your first asteroid? Late September. Early October 2022. Woohoo. Lena. Hi team. What do you do all day? Sit in meetings. Reply to emails. Build spacecraft. Review thousands of documents. And, oh wait, save Earth, colon, Lena. How do you test the technology and techniques you develop? For DART, we do a lot of simulations on the ground using hardware that we will be flying on the spacecraft. To test the targeting of the asteroid, we will run those algorithms in flight, practicing on the moons of Jupiter and possibly another binary asteroid system. Do you all have suggestions, Lena? If you launch a mission in our lifetime, Will you be singing Aerosmith songs as the rocket launches? Inquiring minds need to know. I've been hoping for Shakira, but would settle for this one from Thomas Dolby. YouTube.com link. Andy. So is the craft meant to be, for lack of a better term, a punch to the asteroid? I've always had an idea that you could spike rockets into an asteroid to thrust it off its path. Is this similar? Yes, exactly, but a bit of a friendly punch, a fist bump. The small moon orbits the bigger moon in 12 hours, and we're going to change its orbit by 8 minutes. Not much of a punch, but readily observable from Earth, Lena. Have you guys located the Infinity Stones yet? Unfortunately, the project I'm working on with Dr. Gene Foster has totally ground to a halt. Andy. What if a 200 km asteroid was hurtling towards Australia? Sydney and you received an unlimited budget to stop it. With one month's notice, how could you stop? 200 kilometers in one month? Under those conditions I'd throw the biggest party I could conceive of with my unlimited budget. Doesn't matter where that would hit. It'd be bad for everyone. Comma. Andy. Is there a threshold of risk, in terms of damage, cost to living beings, etc, 
for when you all would consider an intervention necessary. This may be seen as a cop out, but that's in the purview of the policy folks. It also changes depending on the information we have. A decade ago, we didn't know the orbits of all of the 1km objects, which would cause global devastation. Now we are confident we know where those are, and most of the remaining risk is in objects between 140-1000 meters in size. That's where the discovery pushes today, Andy. Any chance you can allow me to try and punch an asteroid? I'm game, but you'll need to arrange your own ride, Andy. Being trolled by a NASA expert is my peak. I've been an asteroids player from back in the day. I was much better at Centipede, Joust, and Tempest, particularly Joust, but I'm confident I could beat Lena and Tom if we had an asteroids tournament. Andy. How long will it take for the spacecraft to get to the asteroid on the first test launch? If we launch on the first day of our primary trajectory, 14 months, Lena. Can you ally 5, explain it like I'm 5, how you're going to ram something into a moving asteroid in order to change the asteroid's orbit, like you're 5, okay, try running as fast as you can into your big brother as he's walking down the street and see if his motion changes, bet it works, Tom. What are the consequences of deflecting a large asteroid? Would chunks of it bounce off and create some cosmic chain reaction that would destroy Jupiter's rings or Mercury's version of the dinosaurs? Or would they just burn up in the atmosphere and Australia would have a lovely light show? Thoughts on the movie Armageddon? Well, can't answer for all of the asteroids, but for Dart to the Moon, we don't expect the dust created by the impact to come back to Earth. As for Armageddon, a fun movie. But they did have grass growing on the asteroid, Lena. Ro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content moite. It's free and that's a great price.